this video is off to a great start. Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review of the new Suicide Squad movie, which I am thrilled about. So, the movie obviously begins before the Suicide Squad is formed. So it goes into the origin stories of each of the members of the Suicide Squad, which obviously you have to do um, with a kind of first run movie like this. Especially for those who don't know what Suicide Squad is. It is a band of not necessarily villains, but bad guys who have been caught and are utilized for good. So it's Amanda Waller's little, you know, not so moral team to kind of do the jobs that they don't want to risk the superheroes doing. It is one of my favorite comics that I have ever read. So when I heard that they were making a movie and that Margot Robbie was going to be Harley Quinn, I was ecstatic. So let's start with the origin stories. Now, Harley and Deadshot, played by Will Smith, get brilliant backstory segments. We get flashbacks of their yeah. life before they were caught and then as they were apprehended by Batman. Now, obviously you need the inclusion of Batman in those flashbacks to give reference to those characters. So you have some sort of idea where they're coming from. What I didn't like was the inclusion of Batman in the present time of the movie, which I'll get into later. So you get this rich sense of their story as Deadshot with his daughter and Harley with the Joker, and I thought Harley's was even more well done than Deadshot. Um, Deadshot, because it's Will Smith, he kind of steals the show no matter what role he's playing in, um, and he's always kind of this similar, you know, badass role. So to see him in this role, it wasn't really anything shocking for me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have wanted a no-name actor in it because I don't think, you know, I think he, Will Smith's a good actor and for good reason. So it's, it's, that's how he's gotten to be Will Smith. But I think me knowing him from a bunch of other roles kind of colored that and I wasn't looking at it as objectively if I, as I would have if it wasn't more of a lesser well-known um, actor. Now, Harley's origin story, I think, was done well in some areas and not so well in others. What I did love, I loved that they went fully back into her life as Harleen Quinzel, um, psychiatrist for the Joker. I loved that they had the little moments between them where you could see that she was kind of losing herself in his manipulation of her. I thought that was perfect because that is what makes Harley so tragic as a character and just awesome to watch. Um, what I didn't like, I didn't like that they kind of used the Joker as a romantic tool in the movie. It was less about Harley breaking out on her own as a kind of bad guy and it was more about Harley's romance with the Joker. You know, if we're going by the comics, the Joker doesn't care about Harley. He uses her when he needs her and he'll literally throw her away if he's done with her. So I think using the Joker as a kind of romantic interest for Harley was a little weird for me. It felt more like a film, it felt more like a marketing tool than it did a characterization of the Joker. The intro of each character's Katana didn't get an intro until she was introduced to the actual team, which I didn't really like. I thought it kind of missed out on an opportunity to contrast, you know, this actual good guy with this bad guy becoming good kind of team. So I wish they would have introduced her with the other characters so that you have this idea of who's going to be coming into the group. Slipknot, it's another character in the comic book, but I think you know, they need that kind of use to show, you know, this is the risk these characters are taking. If you're not going to follow, they're going to be killed. So to cut his character out early on, I don't think it was done early enough because they kind of seem to be building some kind of relationship between him and Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang to me was completely annoying and I don't know why. The actor who plays him, Jai Courtney, is Australian, so you would think it would come across more naturally than it did. To me, it felt like 
a fake Australian accent from an American actor, and I don't understand why. I realize the character itself can be a little cliche, I mean it's Captain Boomerang, but to some extent I thought the other characters felt more genuine than his. His kind of felt like anti-comic relief throughout the entire thing, and he was only used, you know, for the butt of the joke. Um, I thought the inclusion of the Flash to apprehend him was brilliant. I loved seeing those type of characters thrown into the mix so that we have this sort of, you know, universe reference for those characters. As a writer, one of my favorite things is character development. So this review is going to be very heavily character development based. Um, cause it's, it's how I read a story. So in the comic books for Suicide Squad, the Joker I don't believe is ever in it, and if he is, it's very minimal. Um, the Joker's daughter is in the comics, but not the Joker himself. And I think that was a huge part of Suicide Squad. It wasn't, it wasn't about the Joker, it was kind of about these not so much less dangerous, but like slightly under the Joker's levels. And I think because it included Harley, it was important that it wasn't about the Joker, um, because her entire origin is centered around him so much that I think to see her acting on her own is really important. I think this having the Joker largely in this film was kind of a takeaway from that. It didn't really let Harley be Harley, but I understand I think not a lot of people know who Harley Quinn is and I think this movie stood out as a jumping off point for new movies. You know, in all um, personal opinions of Jared Leto aside, I think his version of the Joker is interesting, but not really what I look for in a Joker character. I think he was a lot more creepy and too human for me, if that makes sense. Heath Ledger's Joker is my ideal standard of Joker. I like that kind of unpredictability of it. It just made me uncomfortable the entire time rather than like wow, this is a villain. I don't think they had that big of a budget. And the special effects in this were intentional and they were used perfectly. I'm not one of those people who can be entertained by like gun scene after gun scene where it's just bullets flying and doing backflips and a bunch of character doubles. I think that that can be used mainstreamly and it can be entertaining to a lot of people. And I was happy to see that this film had a lot less of what we saw in Batman vs Superman, which I'm not gonna get into. <laughs> but I think the directing was very good. The writing was brilliant up until about the middle of the movie. I think where it got lost was it started to become so revolved around June and Enchantress and her standing as a villain that it felt like the Suicide Squad themselves became the backdrop of the movie. So rather than seeing these almost uncompatible characters come together and be forced into a group to work for something that they don't necessarily believe in, it became more about this is a bad guy that we need to take down and I don't think I don't think that was really important in this um, movie especially as you know, kind of a startup movie for what I'm assuming is going to be multiple Suicide Squads to come, hopefully. I think it was really well done for a startup movie, but unfortunately DC has this habit of, you know, putting the cart before the horse in a sense. They try to shove in too many things that seem like they're leading to new movies because they are leading to new movies. You know, the Batman sequence at the end of the movie where he's basically warning Amanda Waller that she needs to shut this team down before he does. Um, I think that was an okay way of leading into another movie, but it didn't really have any relevance for the ending of a Suicide Squad movie. It felt kind of awkward to me. It didn't... I think the Joker's presence in flashbacks and Batman himself's presence in flashbacks was brilliant. I think their presence in the actual timeline of the story felt forced. It felt like we were, you know, kind of like, oh, here's a character you know, pay attention to him, remember him, he's awesome. Um, it felt more like a marketing tool to me than, you know, an actual storyline of it. I think they could have done that through mentioning or, you know, character conversation, some type of indication that 
you know, this is going to lead to something big sooner or later. Um, and that this isn't really a group that you want to be putting together. I was really happy with the music. I, I don't think anyone could find anything bad about that soundtrack. It was brilliant from start to finish. Classic songs that I'm, well, at least most of the world, I hope, would know. And they were timed so perfectly that every time a character was on screen and a song would start, you would be like, yes, that is that character. The sound engineers were amazing. The dialogue was not overpowered by any of the background sound, which I despise in movies. I also loved the set design and the costuming for each of the characters. I thought um, Captain Boomerang's was a little dark at times, but I kind of liked that. It made him a lot less of this like silly, almost, I don't want to say useless, but almost like undermined character in the group. It gave him this kind of dark, brooding feeling, and the inclusion of his unicorn was amazing. <laughs> because it, it gives you this tiny little sense of who he is, and I think that's what this film does really well. It takes these characters and it brings them to life. Now, Jay Hernandez, total out of the blue for me. I didn't know who he was prior to this film, and I thought he was incredible as El Diablo. He brought this kind of vulnerability and this soft teddy bear nature with also this kind of troubled past with him, which I thought was absolutely perfect. Um, when reading Suicide Squad, I actually didn't care that much about his character and I felt like um, being forced to sit there and watch him retell the story of how he got to where he was. I think that was so important of drawing the group together. It also brought out a more serious side to Harley, which I loved seeing. A lot of times she can come off as annoying, which she's supposed to be, um, and kind of two-dimensional. So I liked that they gave her a chance to kind of show the mask that she puts on to kind of prevent anyone from undermining her because she's undermining herself. I could make an entire video about Harley Quinn and her character development. Overall, I thought this movie was really good. I, I've seen so many bad reviews about it and I don't really understand that other than I can see Joker fans um, really not liking this film. And I think that's the problem with including him in a Suicide Squad film. It's like he has no relevance to this Suicide Squad universe other than the fact that he's a part of Harley Quinn's story. I honestly, in, in my opinion, I think they should have kept him in flashbacks until other movies where they could set things up for him to be the actual villain and not just this kind of, oh here, remember the Joker's in this? And, and he comes back on a helicopter you know it it felt like they were they were set up moments to kind of remind you that he's in the story um other than that i just i don't think okay so my battery ran out and i can't remember where i was hey, sorry to interrupt this is future Kristen interrupting past Kristen to remind her that she forgot to talk about killer croc after her camera cut out so killer croc was incredible much more of a huge personality than he was in the comics, at least for me. Um, and I really liked it. I thought he was funny when he had to be and kept it kind of tame throughout the whole thing, which I thought was a nice twist. Um, you normally expect him to be this larger than life presence, so I thought his toned down kind of quippy character throughout the movie was really nice. All right, back to the review. Yes. So I think I'm going to just end this here. Um, as a Suicide Squad fan, I just, I think it was, I think it was a great start to a Suicide Squad franchise. Um, and I think a lot of their decisions were marketing based, you know, what's going to draw viewers in, let's bring in characters that they know and love, um, that bring in big bucks anyway, so let's include Batman and Joker. Um, but I... I also think they, the writing cared about the characters, and I think that's what was important to me. So I definitely recommend this movie. I would give it a 4 out of 5, which is 
you know, me trying to, I would give it a 5 out of 5, but I'm compensating for my love for Harley. You could understand my rambling. Then like this and subscribe to see more, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.